All right, I want to talk about the Paul Christ firing. And uh, I think we've gotten a little out of control here in college football. Uh, the man was 40-plus games over 500. Uh, had probably double-digit wins majority of the time he was at Wisconsin. And we can't, boosters, whatever, you can't get so butthurt over losing to Brett Bielema, your former coach, that you'll fire a good coach. Uh, they were on Paul Feinbaum yesterday with Lynn Elmore, and they were talking about this situation, and they were saying the amount of coaches' salaries that are getting paid out over the years is, like, astronomical. It's, like, on the same level of the salaries that foreign players get that were in the NBA and the NFL and all that other stuff when they're old money. And it just scares me because it's just like Nebraska – for a perfect game. Let's go to the Big 12. Last year, uh, I understand TC wanted to go different ways, but you at least owe Gary Patterson to finish the season. Nebraska, they kept hiring and firing. The Solich won 11 games. It's something ridiculous. Either went 10 and 1 or 9 and 1. Something ridiculous. Bo Pelini went 9 and 3 or something like that. And they fired him. And then they got a mediocre guy. They were 7 and 5, 7 and 6. Then they got the hometown kid who couldn't even break five wins a year. And it's like the same cycle keeps happening over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, Texas Tech, it looks like they are better, but I don't think they've recovered from when they fired Mike Leach over the political BS. And eventually somebody, something's going to happen. Like uh, somebody's going to step in, like kind of like back in the day, stuff got out of control. That's why the NCAA came up with bylaws and it was created. So at some point, there's going to be some type of organization where it's going to have to cap coaches' salaries and do certain things. Uh, because, you know, with $100 million for a coach, NIL, it, it's going to get out of control. And at some point, somebody's going to say, all right, this is college athletics. And some people love college football better than the NFL. Like, I like the NFL, but I love college football. It's just a different feeling you get every Saturday. So at some point, somebody's going to come along and say, all right, this is getting out of control. Because, like they say, like, it's the athletic directors. They're just playing with other people's money. It's not coming out of their pocket. They're just like, oh, give them this money, give them this money. And people say, oh, with the TV contracts and all this other stuff, they just got money to blow. And at some point, somebody needs to tell boosters, like, yo, like, Put that money away for a rainy day. Like, you see what COVID did. Like, put that money away for facilities in the future. So us, the fans, when they when we want to go to a game, they don't raise our ticket prices by $20 because they say they got to uh, rebuild this or they got to renovate this or your hot dog at the game or your chicken sandwich is a million dollars because they say, oh, we're trying to invest in this for the new facilities. They should have that money for the new facilities put away rather than wasting it on outrageous coaching contracts and firing people when it's just not necessary. Now, when I was younger, it was a time where I'm just like, damn, they need to fire that coach. He sucks. He's terrible. Now it's to the point where people are just firing coaches based on emotion. And it's like when we were younger, we would go out and try and do what Michael Jordan did, and you'd be like, wow, that's harder than we think. We would go out and try and swing the baseball bat like we Ken Griffey Jr., and you realize, wow, that's harder than you think. Some of these boosters and these alumni, yeah, you have great uh, facilities. You have a great tradition. But unfortunately, people like Nick Saban and Urban Meyer make it look so easy that people get frustrated and think they can do it. No, there's goats and everything. There's Phil Jackson in the NBA. People can't duplicate that. The man can go from Chicago to Los Angeles, and he can win world championships. Uh, Bill Belichick, NFL. There's just some people you can't duplicate or should I say replicate. They're just, you know, the God-given talent to that situation. You know, rock and roll or, or, or you know, in Texas, I know they love uh, Willie Nelson. It's just certain people that's not like that. And hip-hop, Jay-Z. Well, like, it's just certain things and certain people that it's just not that easy. And Saban and Urban Meyer made it look like that. And now everybody's thinking they can get a Saban and an Urban Meyer. And it's just not it's not realistic. And I'll finish with this. Texas A&M. <laughs> when they hired Jimbo Fisher, I was sitting there saying to myself, I'm like, good hire. But after six or seven years, he had the same record as Kevin Sumlin. And anybody go look it up. 
his record is pretty much similar to Kevin Sumlin, probably around eight and four, eight and five, and had one good year where they had a double digit win and they beat Alabama. Sumlin had one year, had a double digit win, they beat Alabama on the road with uh, Johnny Football Manziel, and after that it was you know eight and five, eight and four, maybe nine and three, nine and four. Like that's what A and M is. A and M is a great football school, beautiful facilities. But they're not going to be Alabama every year. But every three or four years, they'll compete for the SEC title and have a chance at winning the national title and beating Alabama. But they're not going to win 10, 11, 12 games every year. That's just not the reality of it. And I think some of these places need to accept and enjoy winning before they go over the deep end. I'll give you a final example in baseball. Cincinnati Reds, they fired a guy named Dusty Baker. It's almost a decade later. They're still going through managers, still firing people. Dusty Baker has went to multiple multiple organizations. He's been fired, but at all organizations, guess what? He's had a winning record. So who's the winner? You got to learn how to win before you can start complaining. I'm out.